Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you. I am uh, Gian Maria Zanella, and I am uh, the manager of a research and development department of uh, Vazon Group. It is the holding uh, of uh, Jukas USA. Together with uh, Marco Licalzi, we will try to explain how to reduce uh, oxidability and uh, achieving olfactory cleanness in wines using the synergy between uh, specific uh, inactivated yeast and physical processes. This is uh, an important uh, point of view if we consider also how are changing the climate condition during the last years. And yes, this caused a lot of problems uh, on the winery. In fact, uh, the winery is uh, directly related uh, to viticulture and uh, the global warming is changing this topic a lot. Let's see something together. We all uh, know and uh, we saw a lot of these uh, maps uh, in the last uh, 10 years, but it's really amazing how our planet is becoming more and more hot since the 50s. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see from uh, uh, sorry from uh, these uh, maps uh, how the temperature is changing uh, during the last uh, 50 or 70 years. But uh, what does it mean for us? It means this. We have uh, grapes uh, with uh, unbalanced uh, uh, ripeness that lead to a lot of problems. The sunburns uh, lead uh, to problems that uh, every one of us has seen. These viticulture problems lead to irregular ripeness. And uh, uh, this is a picture, for example, of a Pinot Gris from last vintage. And uh, its color is quite red. Is uh, It was one of the first Pinot Gris uh, that were harvested. And uh, uh, the problem is that the the ripeness uh, are uh, really strange. In fact, uh, you can see that the sugar content uh, of uh, these grapes uh, were quite amazing. Uh, 24 uh, uh, bricks means uh, uh, more or less uh, 14 alcohol degrees. And uh, imagine the problems of the acidity range, but uh, also on the aroma compounds of uh, these grapes and the other aspect that we will talk together. The main problem are on uh, ripeness, oxidability, freshness lack, and uh, uh, stability problems too, mainly on the uh, proteins side. We can have some tools and uh, that can help to solve uh, these problems. And uh, this, these tools can be the X-Pro range, specific inactivated yeast that uh, naturally works to prevent or remedy these issues. One of the X-Pro products uh, that uh, can help to reduce the microbiolo uh, microbiological spoliage and uh, oxidation is the X-Pro grapes. Do you know the C-Lab uh, analysis? I'm in love with the, the C-Lab uh, analysis uh, because uh, it's the only way to describe perfectly by numbers what uh, the human view can see. The L describe the brightness, higher the value, higher will be the brightness. The A-Chrome describe the range of colors that uh, start from green, more negative values, to red, more positive values. We prefer the green, naturally. The uh, red values, uh, the positive uh, values are related to oxidation. Same way for uh, the B-chrome. The B-chrome starts from uh, blue, that are the negative values more appreciated by us, and uh, goes to the yellow. Uh, the yellow are the more uh, positive values. That means oxidation on juice, uh, on uh, wine, everywhere on the enological sector. 
But uh, uh, I want to explain a little bit uh, these uh, uh, trials that we present in these graphs. Uh, we have, we take the same juice and uh, we perform the analysis of syllab during 12 days. There were four, four trials. The control, one with the addition of 10 gram hectoliters of X pro grapes, specifically ideated to be used from the first phases of the vinification process. One that is the one in red, one with our X pro protection, and one with 10 gram hectoliter of what we think that is the best competitor. As you can notice, the line and also the points in red are always the best in terms of L, more high, that means more brightness. In terms of B, that means more blue, less value. And in terms of A chrome, that means more green. But uh, it's uh, uh, incredible that uh, they are better even if we compare the last point of uh, X pro grapes with the first point, the zero point of the other trials. And uh, uh, is really uh, amazing uh, how it works. And uh, this is the best way to try to explain how good it can work on uh, white juice and uh, their oxidability. By the way, here's another trial we perform on uh, Pinot Gris, adding uh, 20 gram hectoliters uh, of X pro grapes uh, during the first stage of vinification. X pro grapes uh, is composed by ketosan and a part of specific inactive dry yeast, inactive yeast that is meant to conditioning of the environment and support the alcoholic fermentation kinetics. But uh, the uh, role is made by the ketosan during the pre-fermentative clarification. In fact, uh, as you can see, the final result is quite good in the X pro grapes trials. We will have a better CL on the uh, values on the CL side, but uh, also we will have less microbiological spoilage, but also some other aspects that we can see together. So let's start from the first stage of this vinification. We, uh, at the side bottom, you can see the result of a CLAB calculator to understand better the color during the vinification. We divide this tank of uh, uh, Pinot Gris in two separated tank. And uh, one, the control, was uh, vinificated uh, in the traditional way they use in the cellar. And the trial was uh, vinificated uh, with uh, the same active dry yeast and the same analogical products, but uh, using X pro grapes. So, since from the start uh, of uh, uh, the alcoholic fermentation, the color was right better, as you can see. In fact, uh, we can appreciate that the color of the X pro grapes trial, that is on the left, is better than the control. But also at the half of uh, the ferment alcoholic fermentation, we have the same different. At the alcoholic, during the alcoholic fermentation, the Pinot Gris is uh, quite difficult uh, to uh, have a, a good color. But in these uh, trials, uh, we can notice that the uh, X Pro grapes works very well. The wine uh, is uh, a white wine and uh, uh, has not uh, a color that uh, seems to be oxidated. And uh, the fermentation is going good during these trials. But the final result is this. At the end of alcoholic fermentation, we will have an improvement on the color. On the left, you can see that is better than the control. But also, we have an improvement on volatile acidity, on catechins also, that are lower in the X-Pro grapes trials, and also on total polyphenols. 
And uh, by the way, as I said before, on the microbiome microbial point, on the microbial point of view. So we decide to investigate a little bit more on uh, aromatic compounds. And uh, we saw that the aromatic values were better on the trial X -pro with uh, X-Pro grapes. You can see that this, the green cells are more present in the uh, X-Pro grapes trials. And these were the free form compounds. Uh, they are better excluding the, the oxide uh, compounds. That is uh, good because it means that we didn't have uh, oxidation and cyclization of terpenes. If we look uh, at the free forms of the fermentative uh, compounds, uh, we will uh, have uh, more, we will see green cells uh, that on the X Pro Graves trials only for molecules that are related to fresh descriptor, to fresh aromas, and not related to sweetness or overripened or oxidated one, but also uh, not uh, so high for uh, uh, molecules that are uh, uh, descriptors uh, that are uh, means to be. Uh, derived from uh, alcoholic fermentation problems. So no cabbage, no smoky, no acrid. The good impression is also related uh, to the same molecules in a uh, bounded form. You can say that uh, the ones related to fresh descriptors uh, have similar values uh, uh, to uh, 240 is similar to 260, for example. But uh, keep in mind that uh, we're more, uh, a lot higher in free form in X Pro Grapes trials. The others are generally higher in X Pro Grapes trials. That means that uh, will be available during time. For example, when the winemakers uh, uh, will decide, he knows how to broke this bound the forms. Uh, and uh, to set them free. Uh, and uh, this uh, means that uh, all the aromas will be available and uh, will be uh, with the one we have seen the previous uh, slides. And uh, this uh, is in order to have more richness on olfactory side. Last, the tiles. You know that Pinot Gris is not a variety known for uh, the tiles or for aromatic compounds uh, like uh, 3MH or other. But uh, in association with uh, a good active dry yeast that uh, works on that, we can have uh, some good result. And uh, we can have an improvement uh, with X Pro gra grapes, as you can see here. The result uh, was a wine with more freshness and better color that. Uh, can uh, uh, give best results during time. And keep in mind that it, its aim uh, of uh, the Expro grapes uh, is uh, also to have uh, a good preparation on microbial side uh, due to the ketosan. But uh, the secondary effect is all of this. But there are other ways to help the freshness uh, and uh, also, that can help uh, really in a, a good uh, in a, uh, good on the oxidation too. One of these is the use of X Pro verb on the first day of alcoholic fermentation, for example, because of uh, its natural high presence of alcoholic of uh, amino acid and uh, well balanced too. As you can uh, see from the graph, the uh, kinetics with the uh, addition of 20 gram hectoliters of X-Pro grapes at first days of alcoholic fermentation uh, is uh, better than the traditional autolyzed yeast, but also is better naturally of uh, the control and uh, the ammonium phosphate. And this is due to its naturally high presence and well-balanced amino acid uh, range. x proverb is really good during active dry yeast rehydration. 
using 20 gram hectoliters of exproverb during rehydration can improve the kinetics, as you can see from the graph, compared to the conventional rehydration or an old rehydration made with the ammonium phosphate. And uh, thanks to its high contents on uh, in the bounded and the free tiles molecules, not the ones we talked before uh, uh, about aromas, but proteic uh, mole protein molecules that uh, have no impact uh, on the olfactory uh, point of view. We can, uh, so in the, using this exproverb during uh, the rehydration, we can uh, have uh, a yeast that can work uh, with more wellness and better during alcoholic fermentation. Yeah, we can use as booster of active dry yeast using with other activators. But remember that uh, we can use uh, as an activator and to protect the aroma, the aromas, and uh, to improve the shelf life. Uh, uh, its uh, presence uh, in a natural content of amino acid is really high and well balanced. But uh, it has uh, a lot of other molecules that are quite interesting for the wellness of the uh, active dry yeast. And it, this means a prevention of oxidation of the wine and a good production of aromas. By the way, we were talking about uh, oxidation. And uh, looking at the oxidation test, in the table, we can see that we have an oxidation index three times lower than the control on this Chardonnay. We like to improve and we, so we perform an internal method that we call oxidation dynamic test, where we measure the C-Lab over time in oxidation condition and heating condition. In a, uh, we measure the syllab in a continuous mood. As you can see, the trial with the uh, X pro verb, the yellow one, has better values uh, than the control, either for a B chrome, but also for uh, A chrome. That means uh, that uh, this wine produced with X pro verb is really less oxidizable. This is the final result of on uh, the Chardonnay we have uh, seen before in the previous slides. And uh, we can say that uh, the values are better, but also that the pinking test is better than the control. The pinking test, in fact, uh, on uh, the trials with X proverb is 14, and uh, the pinking on the Chardonnay control is 23 that is much higher. Looking at the picture, we can uh, say that uh, a Chardonnay with the X pro verb that is on the left is quite better than the, a Chardonnay that is the control with this color. We don't want uh, a Chardonnay like this. We prefer a Chardonnay that is uh, more green, like uh, the Chardonnay fermented with the X pro verb. But uh, let's have a look uh, to the aroma compounds. Uh, the free form compounds values of the uh, are really interesting, excluding the oxidated ones and the ones that are related to sweet aroma or uh, uh, as descriptors. In fact, we can see that the values are really high also compared to the use of X-Pro grapes, but X-Pro grapes has other function, other uh, aspect to, uh, that it works, it works. The free form fermentative compounds of the trials fermented with the X-Pro verve are better for the fresh descriptors and less lower, especially for alcoholic fermentation problems or sweet flavors. But looking at the bounded side of the, the same fermentative compounds, they are really quite better on the X proverb trials. That means more protection on the olfactory side. Ah, they are logically more clean on the olfactory uh, side 
due to the absence of aroma that are caused of alcoholic fermentation problems, as I said before. But talking about the tires, the tires, the tyolic aroma are higher on X proverb trials. And this is due to all the amino acid, the content that is naturally uh, rich, uh, uh, the, 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 is uh, naturally uh, rich in the X proverb. Sorry for uh, this. But uh, by the way, we have uh, another tool that uh, can help uh, and uh, that we will talk uh, during uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, this tool can help uh, uh, the winemakers uh, on uh, other uh, sides and uh, can help the winemakers uh, if uh, using uh, during alcoholic fermentation, it is uh, an inactive yeast intended uh, as activator, but as also secondary action that are quite good. In fact, uh, it also works on protein stability and uh, can be helpful, uh, I think, because uh, every one of us uh, knows uh, a vineyard that uh, always gives problems on protein stability once the grapes become wine. Using XPRO identity white during the vinification process is helpful also on this. This works over time. And uh, if we age on its least the wine, we will have a wine that need less bentonite than the control. In fact, as you can see in the table, the prototest is decreasing the value two months after alcoholic fermentation if we use five or 10 gram hectoliters during alcoholic fermentation of XPRO identity white. Yeah, sorry. The need of bentonite is really low, even if compared with the test that needed six, uh, 60 gram hectoliters of bentonite. As you can see, the D and E, that are the B and C, after 20 gram hectoliters of bentonite are stable. And the control needs 60 gram hectoliters of bentonite. But uh, the interesting thing is, uh, as you can see from uh, this graph, is uh, that uh, expedient white works on tomatin-like proteins, but also on kitinase over time. In fact, the black line was the control, and the pink is the wine fermented with 10 gram hectoliter of uh, XPRO identity white, and that aged on its lease for six months. And uh, we need more investigation about this topic, uh, but we believe that this is related uh, to the electrical surface charge of uh, XPRO identity white that is quite different from uh, other specific inactivated yeast or traditional inactivated yeast. Uh, more studies will be presented in the next future. Last but not the least, uh, the use of uh, XPRO identity white during the alcoholic fermentation gives you more fresh wine and uh, less green in the factory point of view. That means more identity. This is why it's called identity white. So this is uh, our proposal to try to solve this kind of problems and to reduce uh, oxidability and achieving olfactory cleanness in wine. But uh, it's only for uh, the enological products side. In fact, uh, the physical processes will be explained by Marco. Thank you.